so up to last class we have finished capacitors we have finished energy stored in capacitor force between the plates of capacitor as well as the expression of energy density or the next topic is sharing of capacitor or conductors the next is sharing of capacitor or conductor so the sharing of capacitor or conductor it's like you can understand this particular <laughs> topic sharing of capacitor or conductor through this example say instead of capacitor you have two containers you have two containers filled with water up to different levels so this is the level of water in first container and this is the level of water in second container this is the volume of water in first container and this is volume of water in second container so it's very obvious that volume of second container is greater than volume of first container level of liquid in second container is greater than level of liquid in first container if i connect these two containers if i connect these two containers then water will flow from so what will be the direction of flow of water it will flow from container 1 to container 2 or from container 2 to container 2 to 1 from 2 to 1 and they will flow until they will acquire same volume or same level water will flow from container 2 to container 1 it will flow up to they will acquire same level water will keep on flowing until they acquire same level so once the level of both the containers become same the flow of water stops so water or liquid always flow from a container at higher level to container at lower level and they flow until they acquire same level or the level of water in both the containers say this is the sharing of container instead of sharing of container if we talk about sharing of capacitor is is uh, is there volume same after sharing or just level just level volumes are still different just like containers liquid filled in containers we have capacitors or conductors instead of level in the case of capacitor or conductor we will use potential instead of volume we will use charge so remember this analogy so potential is like level and charge is like volume of it it's like volume of it so if i take two capacitors this is my initial stage this is my initial stage i take two capacitors first capacitor of capacitance c1 at some potential difference v1 then another capacitor of capacity c2 at potential difference v2 so you have two capacitors capacitance c1 potential difference v1 capacitance c2 potential difference v2 what is the total charge in the system initial charge in the system jubaina zero why zero how much charge is stored in this capacitor its capacity c1 potential difference v1 Half capacitance and potential difference. So charge is C into V, right? Yes, sir. So the charge stored in this capacitor is C one V one. What about the next capacitor? C two V two. C two V two. So this is the initial charge. So the initial charge stored in the system is C one V one plus C two. Next, fine. And I'm assuming that V one is greater than V two. 
Now, if I connect C1 and C2, Fatma, what will happen if I connect these two capacitors, capacitor C1 and capacitor C2? Um, charge will flow. Charge will flow. In which direction this charge will flow? From V. From C1. V1 to C1 to C2. Because charge always flows from a capacitor at higher potential to a capacitor at lower potential. And they will keep on flowing until they acquire same potential. Until both the capacitors acquire same potential, this charge will keep on flowing. So charge will flow. Charge will flow from capacitor or conductor at higher potential at higher potential to lower potential until they acquire same range. Until they acquire same range. So, and this V is the common potential. The same potential is V. This V is common potential. This V is the common potential. So, how much is the final charge here? What is Q final? Fatma, what is Q final now? C1 V C1 V plus C2 V Can I take this V as common? Take this V common. This is C1 plus C2. Okay. Note it down. Jumana, can I rub it? Okay, sir. So, you are supposed to calculate this common potential. So, to calculate this common potential, we can use conservation of charge. We can use conservation of charge. So, that's Q initial. is Q final. So Q initial is C1 V1 plus C2 V2. Q final is V C1 plus C2. So your common potential comes out to be it's C1 V1 plus C2 V2 by C1 plus C2. So this is the common potential. C1 V1 plus C2 V2 by C1 plus C2. This is the common potential. After common potential, we have the loss in energy. After common potential, you have to calculate loss in energy. Say, when charge flows through the conductor, through the wires, when a charge flows through the wire, then current will flow because current is nothing but flow of charge. Flow of charge is current basically. And when current flow through the wire, 
then a part of electrical energy is dissipated as heat i'm repeating it again when you connect two capacitors which are at different potentials then charge will flow from a capacitor at higher potential to a capacitor at lower potential until they acquire same potential now when the current charge is flowing that means current is flowing through the wire when current flows through the wire then a part of your electrical energy gets dissipated in the form of heat energy a part of electrical energy gets dissipated as heat energy so basically there is a loss in energy so you're supposed to calculate loss in energy you are supposed to calculate loss in energy so you can calculate loss in energy as loss in energy delta u is joanna i'm just going back take screenshot you have missed one slide just take screenshot of this slide you want to take screenshot of this slide as a first okay sir so can i raise it yes sir i took so if we use conservation of charge then the common potential is this c1v1 plus c2v2 by c1 plus c2 next we have to calculate the loss in energy so loss in energy is basically delta u which is the difference in initial energy and final energy so the difference in initial energy and final energy is known as loss in energy. we represent this loss as delta u. the loss means initial quantity is greater and final is smaller that's the loss energy so uh jobena what what was the initial energy of the system initially your capacity was c1 potential is v1 so what's the initial energy u1 v1 hmm. energy not charge it's half c1 v1 plus it's half c2 v2 square minus final energy final energy is half c1 what is final potential difference fatma what is the potential difference of capacitor after sharing fatma v v so that's half c1 v square Plus half c two v square. Now we can take this v square by two as common there. Or let's take half. So this is half c one v one square plus half c two v two square minus half v square. we can take this half v square as common and we are left with just c1 plus c2 let's call this as equation number 3 that's half v square c1 plus c2 we can substitute the value of v from this equation number 3 we can easily substitute 3 in 4 when we substitute 3 in 4 the change in potential energy is it's half c1 v1 square plus half c2 v2 square minus half c1 plus c2 into v square so your v is c1 v1 c2 v2 c1 plus c2 So that's change in potential energy. Half c1 v1 square, half c2 v2 square minus half c1 plus c2, and this. So the change in potential energy is it's half c1 v1 square 
Okay, I don't have much space now. Just note it down. Any doubt up to this point? Is it clear up to this step? Okay, no doubt. So, Joanne, I can I rub it? Johanna, can I rub it? So I'm erasing it. The loss of energy now is it's delta u, which is half c1 v1 square, half c2 v2 square minus half it's c1 plus c2, it's c1 plus c2. This is c1 v1 plus c2 v2 square divided by c1 plus c2 whole square. So square will cancel the c1 plus c2. Next we can take LCM. So your LCM will be c1 twice of c1 plus c2 now. So this is c1 v1 square into c1 plus c2 plus it's c2 v2 square into C1 plus C2, it's minus of C1 V1 plus C2 V2 whole square. So the loss in energy is it's C1 square V1 square plus C1 C2 V1 square C1, C2, V2 square plus C2 square, V2 square minus. Let's open this whole square. So it will be C1 square, V1 square minus C2 square, V2 square minus 2 C1, C2, V1, V2 divided by twice of C1 plus C2. So this C1 square, V1 square will cancel this C1 square, V1 square. C2 square, V2 square will cancel this C2 square, V2 square. So the loss in energy is, the next is this. This is C1, C2, V1 square, C1, C2, V2 square, 2 C1, C2, V1, V2. So we can take this C1, C2 as common. So you are left with V1 square plus V2 square minus twice of V1, V2 divided by twice of C1 plus C2. So can I combine these term and write them as a single term? V1 square plus V2 square minus 2, minus 2 V1, V2. Is it whole square of something? Yes. A minus V whole square. Yeah. So that's C1, C2. That's V1 minus V2 whole square divided by twice. So this is the loss in energy. This is loss in energy. This is loss in energy. C1, C2, V1 minus V2 whole square divided by twice of C1 plus C2. This is loss in energy. 
Okay, just note it down. So this is loss in energy when you connect two capacitors or two conductors. There are two questions in NCRT based on this concept. Let me know when you have written. Fatma, Joanna, shall I raise it? Yeah, I'm erasing it. It solved some numericals in NCRT based on this concept. Okay, let's solve this question number 2.11. Is it visible? Is it visible this 2.11? Yes. Okay. Let's solve this again. So a 600 picofarad capacitor is charged by 200. That means you have one capacitor, the capacity is 600 picofarad and its voltage is 200. The 600 picofarad capacitor. It is disconnected from the supply and is connected to another uncharged 600 picofarad. That means V1 is this, there is another 600 picofarad capacitor, but it's uncharged. What about its potential? Jibana, what is the potential of this uncharged capacitor? Uh, C2 C, C. See, in question it's mentioned this is uncharged. So what should be the potential difference, voltage of an uncharged capacitor? Same as V1? If it is uncharged, huh, that means no charge stored in the capacitor, then its voltage should be zero. Okay, see. Uncharged means voltage is zero. So this is the scenario before sharing. That this one is charged capacitor. The next one is uncharged. Now if I connect these two capacitors. If I connect these two capacitors. Then charge will flow until they acquire a common potential. So what is the common potential? How to calculate common potential? Johanna, would you try? How would you calculate the common potential B? Johanna. Um, I think it's C1V1 plus C2V2. Yeah, that's C1V1 plus c By C1 plus C2. Over C1 plus C2. So your C1 is 600, V1 is 200. Since V2 is zero, so it comes out to be zero. Uh, but we have to convert unit. 
So let's first, let's do unit conversion. So your C1 is 600 picofarad. One picofarad means 10 raised to the power minus 12 farad. C2 is again 600 picofarad, 600 into 10 raised power minus 12 farad. If I substitute these values here, so this is 600 into 10 raised to the power minus 12 multiplied by V1, which is 200 plus 0. Then this is 600 into 10 raised to the power minus 12 plus 600 into 10 raised to the power minus 12. So this is 600 into 200 into 10 raised power minus 12. This is 600 into 10 raised power 12 plus 600 into 10 raised power 12. So that is 1200 into 10 raised power minus. This gets cancelled out. 600 will cancel this 1200, it's 2. It gets cancelled out, it's 100. So the potential difference comes out to be 100. That's the common potential. But it's asking about how much electrostatic energy is lost in the process. So the formula for lost energy, we have derived it. Formula of loss in energy. Fatma. C1, C2 into V1 minus V2 by 2, C1 plus C2. Square, right? C2. Yeah. C1, C2. Just substitute these values here and get the value of loss in energy. Though he haven't asked about the common potential, but we have calculated common potential. Now substitute the values of C1, C2 here and try to calculate the loss in energy. The substitute all values here. Answer is just calculate the loss in energy in this case. Answers. Oh, sorry. In denominator, it's C one plus C. Okay. Can I leave this numerical as a homework? Just have to substitute the value. It's it's taking too much time. So try calculating it after the class. Just substitute the values of C1, C2, V1, and V2. That's it. So let's move on to next question. So can I erase this part? This part of common potential? Okay. 
let's move on to next question is it visible no sir no yes there is one more numerical on sharing of charge and sharing of capacitor that's 2.20 क्वेश्चन नंबर 2.20 ऑफ एनसीआर आई वाज गोइंग थ्रू योर प्रीवियस इयर्स पेपर ऑफ फिजिक्स दैट पेपर हैड रियली गुड न्यूमेरिकल्स गुड न्यूमेरिकल्स एंड कंसेप्चुअल क्वेश्चंस इट वाज नॉट थ्योरी बेस्ड न्यूमेरिकल सो सीबीएसई फॉरेन हैव सम गुड एंड टफ न्यूमेरिकल्स बट ऑल दोस न्यूमेरिकल्स आर बेस्ड ऑन क्वेश्चंस ऑफ एनसीआर दैट्स व्हाई आई एम कंसंट्रेटिंग ऑन एनसीआर See if you have this is two point two zero. It says two charged conducting spheres of radii a and b are connected to each other by a wire. So this is the two spheres. So you have two spheres, a sphere of radius a and a sphere of radius b. Some charge over this sphere, some charge over the surface of second sphere. some electric field on the surface of first sphere and electric field on the surface of second sphere if i connect these two spheres out of charge field and potential which quantity would be same for both the spheres if i connect both the spheres by a straight wire which quantity would be same for both the spheres charge potential or uh, capacitor is an open question for all charge charge no what would happen if we connect two capacitors charge will flow from one capacitor to another until they acquire same potential whenever you connect two capacitors or two conductors the charge will flow so both the conductors could have different charge they can have different electric field but once you have connected them their potential will be can say charge flows until they acquire same potential so whenever you have two conductors which are connected through a wire they would have same potential b and same potential if i call potential on the surface is v1 and on the potential on the surface is v2 then we can say after connecting v1 is equal to v2 once you connect these two conductors or capacitors you will get same potential v1 is equal to v2 you can easily calculate v1 v1 is q1 by 4 pi epsilon not a v2 is q2 over 4 pi epsilon not this is potential on the surface is it clear up to this step Padma, Jubaina, Jubaina, is this step clear? Because when you when you connect two cap capacitors or conductors, their potentials becomes equal, and the potential on the surface of a sphere is Q by four pi epsilon naught r. So it's Q one by four pi epsilon naught a is Q two by four pi epsilon naught b. This four pi epsilon naught will cancel this four pi epsilon naught. This Q one by Q two. comes out to be a by b the next thing is you are supposed to calculate the ratio of charge density can you calculate sigma johanna johanna what is the formula of calculating sigma surface charge density q by a yes q by a so that's the charge on the first sphere is q1 what is the area of the first sphere you know 
surface area of this. Pi r square. It's a sphere, not a circle. Sphere is 4 pi a square. Similarly, what is sigma 2, Joanna? Q2 by 4 pi b square. 4 pi b square, great. Now, if I take ratio of sigma 1 and sigma 2, sigma 1 is Q1 over 4 pi a square. Sigma 2 is Q2 over 4 pi b square. Four pi will cancel this four pi. So you will get sigma one by sigma two is q one by q two b square by a square. Jogana, can I substitute the values of q one and q two from somewhere? Jogana. From first equation, we can substitute. So let's substitute one and two. When we substitute one and two, this, what is q1 by q2? That's a by b. Multiplied by b square by a square. So this a square will cancel a, b square will cancel b. So your sigma 1 by sigma 2 comes out to be b by a. So that's equation number. Now, Fatma, how would you calculate electric field on the surface of a sphere? On the surface of a conductor? Fatma. Formula for electric field on the surface of our conductor. We have done this on the last week only. Padma, you don't know. Jubaina. Electric field on the surface of a conductor. No answer. Jubaina. Yes. Um, Q by 4 pi epsilon 0 R. Uh, no, that was potential. Q1, Q, Q1, Q2 by 4 pi. Energy, that's energy. I'm asking field on the surface of on the surface of a conductor. Okay, just turn some pages. Sigma by. Yeah, sigma, sigma by. Sigma epsilon zero. Uh, sigma by epsilon. This is the shed. Maybe this is fourth property of a conductor. Your E1 is sigma 1 by 2 epsilon. Your E2 is sigma 2 by 2 epsilon. You need ratio of E1 and E2. I need this ratio in terms of A and B. Just calculate this ratio and report your answer in chat room. I need this ratio in terms of A and B. Calculate this ratio in terms of A and B. We buy. Very good. Jibana, Joanna, your answers. Very good. So it would be basically sigma 1 by sigma 2, right? And sigma 1 by sigma 2 is V by A.
Okay, so can I erase it? Okay, so that was about capacitor. Next, we will do circuits. We will do DC circuits. The next is DC circuits. DC means direct current. Now next we will do circuits which have a direct current supply. Direct current supply means circuits which are connected through a cell or a battery. Currents are of two types, direct current and alternating current. The example of source of direct current is cell or battery. The example of alternating current is the current that comes in your electronic circuits in your home. The current that comes in the, your home circuits are basically alternating current. First, we will concentrate only on DC circuits. We will do two types of circuits on DC current. The first one is series and parallel combination of resistors. The first one is series and parallel combination of resistors. Of resistor. The second one is series and parallel combination of capacitor. So we'll concentrate on these two topics, series and parallel combination of resistor as well as capacitor. So both have almost same type of question. Each and every question that you will find in capacitor is also in resistor. So we'll do both the topics simultaneously. This is given in NCRT in chapter number two, and this is given in NCRT in chapter number three. So we'll cover both simultaneously. So just note these, the name of these topics. So I'm erasing it, right? So before starting this series in parallel combination of capacitor or resistor, there are some basic rules of circuit, rules of solving circuits. The first rule is division of current. You have done this series in parallel combination in class 10. This was in class 10 syllabus, yes or no? In class 10th, most of the numericals that you came across in series and parallel combination. So you could, in class 10, you can identify series and parallel by just looking at the geometry. By just looking at the problem, you can decide whether your capac uh, resistors are in series or in parallel. But in class 12, the type of problems you have, you can't decide series and parallel just by looking at the geometry decide series in parallel, you should know the division of charge and division of voltage. Series and parallel we will decide through charge and voltage. So the first thing is you have to decide how a charge divide in your circuit. So remember, current and charge divide in the same way. See, current is flow of charge. Current is just flow of charge. That's it. So whatever rules we have for charge are same valid for current. So charge divides due to branching. These rules are not given in NCRT, but without these rules, you can't solve numericals based on series and parallel combination. So charge divides due to branching. Whenever you have branching in your system, the charge devices. For example, so you have a straight wire. There is no branching in this wire. So 
if a charge q passes through this point the same charge will pass through this point so charge will not divide charge does not divide which means if i connect two capacitors in this way you have two capacitors a capacitor c1 and capacitor c2 there is no branching from c1 to c2 only a single wire which means charge in both the capacitors will be same same charge in both capacitors same charge will store in both capacitors in both capacitors so we'll have same charge in both the capacitors but if your wire have branching like right? this is your wire it have these type of branches then your charge will divide say a charge q is flowing through this wire then over this junction the charge will divide into two parts this will be q1 and this will be q the charge will divide into two parts so the charge q will enter the junction it will divide into two parts q1 as well as q so this is the branching this is known as branching if i connect capacitors in this way and one more thing this charge q divides into two parts you can write your q as the sum of q and q so this is charge q it enters in this capacitor then over this junction this charge will divide into two parts this will be q1 this will be q this is c this is c1 this is c2 so while solving circuits of capacitor or of resistor you first have to decide whether your charge divides or not the rate the rule of charge and current are same see one more example if instead of capacitor i take resistors jubena can you decide whether current will divide in these two resistors or not jubena sir current will divide in these two resistors or not no why branching is not there branching is not there so same current will pass through both the resistors what about this now this is r1 this is r2 and this is r3 let's say some i1 current enter in this so fatma what will happen to current in this case current will divide or not yes it will divide it will divide so this is i1 this is i2 this is i3 so you can write your i1 as i2 plus i3 so this is how we decide division of current so this is division of current or division of charge so charge divides due to branching whenever you have branching in your circuit your charge or current will divide the next is is division of voltage the next is division of voltage or potential
division of voltage or potential. So see, unlike charge, potential difference divides due to resistor or capacitor in your circuit. Voltage divide due to resistor or before division, let's see when voltage remains same. potential at all points on a conducting wire is same. So if you have a conducting wire, So while doing properties of conductor, there was a property which says that potential at every point on the conductor is same. So if you have a conductor of this stuff, it doesn't matter whether it's branching or not. If you have a continuous conductor, then potential at every point is same. Potential does not divide due to branching. Potential at every point is same. But instead of a continuous conductor, if you have capacitors or resistors in between, potential divide due to capacitor or resistor. So, Let's say you have a capacitor. This is capacitor. If I say that potential over this point is V, then due to this capacitor, the potential will change. Over this point, your potential will not be V. Potential will change due to this capacitor. Let's say this potential is V. If this is V, V, then this is again V. Potential change due to capacitor only. If this is straight wire, this is V, V, this is again V. But due to this capacitor, the potential will change again. And potential over this point will be something else. That's V. So this is potential. This is capacitor C1, this is capacitor C2. This is potential. For first capacitor, at the left end potential is VA, or the right end potential is VB. For C2, at the left end potential is VB, at the right end potential is VC. If I ask you to calculate potential difference across C1, potential difference across C1, then potential difference across C1 is V1, which is VA minus VB. So across C1, potential difference is VA minus VB. In the same way, potential difference across C2. Across C2. Let's write this as V2. So, Jubena, what is the potential difference across C2? Jubena. No answer. Fatma, what is potential difference across C2? Sorry, sir. I uh, forgot to unmute it. Okay. What is potential difference across C2? VB minus VC. It's VB minus VC. So both have different potential difference. So whenever you have capacitors or resistors in your circuit, then potential will divide. Potential get divided. Okay, just note it down.
So can I erase it, Joanna? I'm giving you a simple circuit. Just have to decide whether current divides or not, and voltage divides or not. So it's a false circuit. You have two resistors. Some current I is moving from it. So, Johanna, same current will flow through these two resistors or different current? Johanna, same current will flow through these two resistors or different currents? Um, different currents. Different currents, right? When a current I enters here, it gets divided into two parts. So from R1, some current I1 flows to it and I2. So can you guess what about the potential difference? If I say that potential over this point is V and potential over this point is VB. So V1 is VA minus VB. So Johanna, can you guess voltage across R2? Johanna, can you guess voltage across R2? In R2 also it will divide, right? Uh, sorry? In R2 also, R2 also it will divide, right? Uh, which, what will divide? Voltage will divide? Yeah. Okay, see here. This is the uh, potential over this point is VA. So this point and this point. Is there any resistor in between these two points? Joanna? Is there any resistor in between these two points? No. So there is no resistor between these two points, which means these two points are at same potential. So if this is VA and then this is again VA. Okay. So can it be VA or there is resistor here? Yes, there is. So it will be VB. Can't be VA now. But if this is VB and these two points are connected by a conducting wire, there is no resistor or capacitor in between. If this is VB, then this is again V. So Joanna, what is V2? Voltage across V2, R2? VA minus VB. So is it same or different? Same. Same. So voltage is same, but current divides. Let's do one more example. So let's say this is resistance R1. This is resistance R2. So, Fatma, will same current flows through these two resistors or current will divide? The same current will flow. And what about voltage? Um, it let's, will divide. Let's call this as VA, right? And let's call this as VB. If this is VB, then this is VB. Can I call what? this as VB or it should, uh, it should be something different? No, it should be VB only. It, 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 it could be VB. No, this, uh, yeah, this is, this will be VC or something. VC or something. So what about the voltage across first one? VA minus VB. VA minus VB. So that's, we call this as VB. And this one? VB minus VC. So this is what we call parallel combination. You have two resistors in a way that voltage across both the capacitors is same. Then you would say these resistors are connected in parallel. And if you have two resistors, so that current in both the resistors is same, then you would say that these two resistors are connected in series. Just like resistors, you can even have capacitors. If you have two capacitors in this way, then again, charge will divide, but voltage will remain same. 
so from now onwards i will expect just by looking at the geometry of the system you can decide whether charge will divide or not so in this particular case charge will divide these two will have different charges but voltage will remain same for both the cases voltage will be same similarly in these type of configurations charge will remain same both will have same charge but yes voltage will divide v1 and v2 so just just note it down and let me know if you have any doubts in it you are very late of rosa what happened ah uh, jibena we can generalize this thing for any number of charges so no can... sir uh, my question is what if there are more than two charges so will it be uh, parallel itself their potential will be same yeah if potent if voltage is same no matter how your charge divides if your voltage is same then all those capacitors or all those resistors are in parallel it's like if i have some r1 r2 r3 r4 in all these four resistors voltage is same divides you can say that all four are connected in uh, parallel this is how we decide series in parallel even if you are asking okay let's so can i raise it Rosa you have missed some basics of circuit I'm starting series and parallel combination I'm starting series and parallel combination of resistors and capacitors we will do both the circuits simultaneously capacitors as well as resistor first we will learn how to solve series and parallel combination of capacitors then we will do series and parallel combination of resistors sure afroza afroza but you can continue from from this topic this is a fresh topic you will understand so series and parallel combination of capacitor first start with series combination so you have capacitor c1 c2 cn you have n capacitors c1 c2 and cn they all are in series i connected these capacitors to a cell of emf e e is the emf of the cell now since there is no branching in the circuit that means charge stored in each capacitor would be same but voltage will divide so this emf of cell will divide into n parts 
so we can write that in series combination charge stored in each capacitor is same charge stored in each capacitor is same while voltage divides and voltage divides c v is q by c so voltage divides as inversely proportional to capacitor that means capacitor having maximum capacitance will have minimum voltage drop across its range we will divide inversely proportional to capacitor remember this now so in the circuit your first motive is to calculate c equivalent c equivalent means if i want to replace all these n capacitors by a single capacitor so your n capacitor c1 c2 c and i want to replace all these n capacitors by a single capacitor that single capacitor is known as c equivalent the first motive of series combination is to calculate c equivalent a single capacitor which can replace all these n capacitors so let's say instead of all these n capacitors i am using a single capacitor c and i connected this c equivalent to the cell of emf this is the charge to so total potential difference total potential difference across the circuit is e so what is e e is the maximum potential the total potential difference across the circuit the total charge stored in each capacitor see the total charge stored in the circuit stored in circuit is q we can calculate q q is the product of c equivalent and e this is what we did in capacitance that charge is capacity into voltage so the total charge stored in the circuit is the total capacity of the circuit multiplied by total emf of the circuit so this is the expression of total charge q which is c equivalent multiplied by okay fatima so what about the charge in each capacitor the charge in each capacitor would be same or different Fatma, what about the charge stored in each capacitor? Same, right? Yeah, charge stored in each capacitor is same as that of total charge. Charge stored in each capacitor is same as that of total charge. So the total charge through the cell is Q. the same charge will stored in each capacitor what about voltage across each capacitor is it same or different yes what about the voltage across each capacitor is it same or different voltage will divide ha huh? this voltage e will divide into n parts voltage of battery will divide into n capacitors okay just note it down
So you can write this as that total EMF E divides into n parts. So this E is V1 plus V2 up to Vn. See Q was C equivalent into E. So we can write this E as Q by C equivalent. The charge stored in first capacitor is Q. Its capacitance is C1. So we can write your V1 as Q by C1. Similarly, charge in second capacitor is Q, capacity is C2, so it's Q by C2. Charge in nth capacitor is Q, capacity is Cn, it's Q by C. So this Q will cancel out everywhere. So you are left with 1 by C equivalent is 1 by C1. 1 by C2, 1 by Cn. So this is how we calculate equivalent capacitance if you have capacitors connected in series. 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 up to 1 by Cn. If you have two capacitors, you can simplify this expression. You can write your C equivalent as simply C1, C2 by C1 plus C2. Otherwise, you will calculate 1 by C equivalent as 1 by C1 plus 1 by C2 up to win by C2. Now, after C equivalent, he will ask you to calculate charge stored in each capacitor. Or if he can ask you to calculate potential across each capacitor. Potential difference, or you can write this as voltage across each capacitor. Say voltage across each capacitor. So, first capacitor, the voltage V1 is Q by C1. For second capacitor, your voltage is Q by C2. For nth capacitor, your voltage is Q by C. And charge stored in each capacitor is same, which is equal to total charge. Charge stored in each capacitor Q1, Q2, Q1. All are equal to Q. The total charge stored in this. Just note it down. Is it clear or you have any doubts in it? Afroza, are you getting it? It's okay. Just note it down. Okay. There's one more thing. He can ask you to calculate energy. Energy. 
energy stored in each capacitor. Energy stored in each capacitor. So what's the formula of calculating energy in a capacitor, Afroza? What is the formula for energy stored in capacitor, Afroza? Formula for energy stored in each capacitor. The simple formula of energy in each capacitor. Jubena, formula of energy stored in each or in capacitor. Uh, Q by C. Q by C is voltage. We did three, we have derived three relations for energy stored. Anyone else will tell formula of energy stored in each capacitor? Half CV square. Half CV square. There were two more relations. Uh, half Q, QV. Good. Last one. Mm. Last one. It's half Q square, guys. So out of these three, here in all three capacitors, charge is constant, but voltage is different. So we'll prefer the formula which have charge and capacity. Because capacity is given, we will prefer formula which have the common quantity. So in all capacitors, voltage divides, but charge is same. So we'll use, we'll prefer the relation having same charge. So energy stored in each capacitor, U1 is, it's half, Q square over C1. U2 is half Q square over C2. And U1 is, it's half Q square over Cn. This is energy stored in each capacitor. Okay, Froza, can you guess how would you calculate the total energy stored in system? Prosa, how would you calculate the total energy stored in the system? Yes, for total energy, let's add energy of individual capacitor. So for total energy, you can either add them up or you can derive one direct formula. It's half Q square over C1 plus half Q square over C2 up to half Q square over C1. So you can take this Q square by two as common and you will be left with one by C1 plus one by C2 up to one by Cn. So one by C1 plus one by C2 up to one by Cn is one by C equal. So energy stored is Q square by two into one by C equal. This is how we calculate energy stored, total energy stored in the circuit. For the total energy, either you calculate energy in individual capacitor and add them up, or you can directly calculate using Q square by 2C. Okay, just note it down, then we'll do one numerical on this concept. So I'm erasing it, okay?
Okay, let's solve a simple problem, a very simple problem based on this concept. So you have two capacitors, a capacitor of five microfarad and a capacitor of 10 microfarad. And we connected it to a cell of 10 volt. The very formula based, basic formula based numerical, this will just clear all formulas. So calculate This will teach you how to how to use formulas in circuits. First, you're supposed to calculate C equivalent. In second part, you're supposed to calculate total voltage. Then total charge. Then voltage of charge stored in each capacitor. charge stored in each capacitor and then voltage across each capacitor energy stored in each And last, total energy stored in the cell. Total energy stored. Okay, let's start with uh, Afroza. So Afroza, what's the formula of C equivalent here? Yes, Afroza, the formula of C equivalent here. Not Q by V, no. For two capacitors, you can calculate C equivalent as C1, C2 by C1 plus C2. Just keep on substituting the value. C1 is 5. C2 is 10. So it's 5 plus 10. It's 50 by 15. So it's 10 by 3 microfarad. That's the first part of the question. In the second part. Fatma, what is the total voltage across the circuit? Fatma. Q square by 2 total into 1. Voltage, not energy. Total voltage. See, the total voltage across the circuit is the voltage of the cell. This will further divide. So total voltage it means it's 10 Clear, Fatma? Yes. Total voltage means voltage of the cell. This voltage of the cell will divide further. Three. Jubaina, how would you calculate total charge? Q1 plus Q2. Uh, we don't have Q1 and Q2 right now. Any other method to calculate total charge? And CV. Uh, in this C1, C1 plus it will remain same, Jubaina. In this particular case, charge will divide or it will remain same? Divide. Series combination. No, it will be same. Be same. So it will never be Q1 plus Q. So to calculate total charge, just use this relation. It's C equivalent multiplied by total voltage. So C equivalent is 10 by 3. The voltage is 10. Remember, this is micro. So it will be micro coulomb. So your charge is, it's 100 by 3 micro coulomb. Fourth one, charge stored in each capacitor. Johanna, how would you calculate charge stored in each capacitor? Johanna. It's same, right? 100 by 3. So it's Q1, it's Q2, both are equal. Both are equal to Q. So Q1 equal to Q2, which is 100 by 3 micro -Q. So Afroza, how would you calculate voltage across each capacitor now? Voltage across each capacitor. Part 5. To 
can look at the calculations that we have done just now. Afroza, I need V1. What's the formula of V1? Just turn some pages, you will get. We just have derived everything. Okay. Fatma, how would you calculate V1? Q by C1. It's total charge by C1. Yes, of course, that's Q by C. So Q1 is, it's 100 by 3. What is the unit of Q1? It's micro coulomb. So to remove micro, I just multiply with a minus 6. Then C1. How much is C1? C1 is 5 microfarad. 5 into 10 raised to the power of minus 6. So gets cancelled out. So your V1 is... It's 100 by 15. So this is V1, which is 100 by 15. Similarly, you can calculate V2, which is Q by C2. So it's 100 by 3. Then raised to power minus 6 into V2. V2 is 10. So that's 10 into 10 raised to the power of minus 6. It gets cancelled out. This 0 will cancel this 0. So your V2 comes out to be 10 by 3. Okay, Jumena, can you guess what would you get if you add V1 and V2? What should be the sum of V1 and V2? Jumena? What, what should you get if you add V1 and V2? 60 by 3, so 20. 21. 20? Yeah. Or it should be 10. See, this the total voltage across the circuit is 10 volt. So this 10 volt get divided into these two. So if I add V1 and V2, I should get back the same 10 volt. You can check it. Okay, I don't have much space now. The first check that V1 plus V2 is equal to 10. And then we will calculate energy stored in each capacitor and total energy stored in the circuit. Note it down and then try to add V1 and V2. We should get back 10. Sir, for V1, we can make it into smaller digit, right? Like 20 by 3. Sir. Yes. I didn't understand why you multiply 10 into 10 to the power minus 6. Okay. It's because uh, the psi unit is Coulomb. This is in micro Coulomb. So convert micro Coulomb into Coulomb by multiplying with 10 raised to minus 6. Similarly here, your capacity is microfarad. To convert that microfarad into farad, I'm multiplying with 10 raised to minus 6. Although they cancel out each other, but it's a better way to solve the miracle. To keep everything in a side. So, so did you add V1 and V2? Yes, sir. So what you are getting? 30 by 3, so 10. 10, good. So, total velocity voltage V is, v. if I add V1 and V2, It would be, it's 100 by 15. So basically that's 20 by 3. 
if I divide it by 5. So it's 20 by 3 plus 10 by 3, which comes out to be 30 by 3. If I cancel out 10, then it comes out to be 10. And it should be 10 volt because the voltage of battery get divided into two parts. So if you add voltage across 5 and 10 microfarad, your end result would be 10 volt. Next is energy stored in each capacitor. So, Jibena, how would you calculate energy stored in each capacitor? Q square by 2C1 for first one. Q square by 2C1, right? So that's part number 6. So it's Q square by 2C1. So how much is Q1? Q is, Q is 100 by 3 into 10 raised to the power minus 6 square by twice of C1. C1 is 5 micro. 5 into 10 raised power minus 6. So that's U1. So your U1 is, it's, uh, this will be 10 raised to the power minus 4 by 3. So that's 10 raised power minus 4 by 3 into 10 raised power minus 4 by 3 into 2 into 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 6. So U1 will be, it's 9 minus 8. 2, 5, 10, 10 into 10 raised power minus 6, which is 10 raised power minus 5. You can take this minus 6 in the numerator. So it's minus 8 plus 6 by 9. So energy stored is 10 raised to the power minus 2 by 9. So this is the energy stored here, which is 10 raised to the power minus 2 by 9. This is how we calculate U. Similarly, you can calculate U2, which will be Q square by 2C2. I'm not doing that calculation. U2 will be Q square by 2C2. And the last part. For total energy, you can just add them up. You can write this as just U1 plus U. Is it clear? All seven parts? Okay, now let's do parallel combination of capacitors. So can I raise it? Okay. The next is parallel combination. When we say that capacitors are connected in parallel, parallel combination means Voltage across each capacitor is same, but ch uh, charge will divide. So this is a typical parallel combination. So this is C1, this is C2, this is C3, EMF of the cell is So if some charge Q enter the circuit, it will divide into N parts. If I call this as Cn, the charge will divide into N parts. So some charge Q1 stored in capacitor C1, Q2 gets stored in capacitor C2, 
and Qn gets stored in capacitor C. Different charge will be stored in each capacitor. But voltage across each capacitor would be same. V1 will be equal to E, equal to the EMF of the cell. Similarly, voltage across second capacitor would be E and voltage across nth capacitor would be E. So if you have this type of arrangement, this we have did in division of voltage. In this particular type of division, charge will divide, but voltage will remain same. So voltage across each capacitor is equal to EMF of the cell. So in this particular type of combination, charge across each capacitor is different. Or we can write this as voltage across each capacitor is same. Voltage across each capacitor is same. But charge divides. Voltage is same, but charge will divide. So then the next step is same. Instead of this whole circuit, replace the whole circuit with a single capacitor having C equivalent capacitance and connect it with the cell of EMF. Charge stored in this capacitor is Q. So here, charge will divide, means the charge provided by cell will divide into n parts. I can simply write this as Q is Q1 plus Q2 up to Qn. I can write this Q as C equivalent into E, total charge is total capacity into total voltage. This Q1 could be written as, in the first capacitor, the capacity is C1 and voltage is E. So you can write this as C1E plus C2E, it's up to CN. This E gets cancelled out from both the sides. So you would get that C equivalent is C1 plus C2 up to CN. This is the equivalent capacitor. C1 plus C2 up to C. That's the equivalent capacitor. After equivalent capacitance, the next is to calculate voltage. Voltage across each capacitor. Voltage across each capacitor. So across each capacitor, voltage is same. V1, V2, Vn. And that is equal to E. That's the same voltage across each capacitor. V1, V2, Vn is equal to E. After voltage across each capacitor, the next is charge stored in each capacitor. Charge stored in each capacitor. In the first capacitor, charge stored is Q1. The capacity is C1, voltage is E, so you can write your Q1 as C1E. Or we can just increase one step. C1, V1 or C1 is E, so you can write this as C1. Similarly, you can write Q2. Q2 is C2, V2, so that's C2E. Similarly, Qn. Qn is Cn, Vn, which is Cn. This is how we calculate charge stored in each capacitor. Okay, uh, Jibana, can you guess which formula for energy should we prefer in this case? Energy stored in each capacitor. Jibana. Yeah. Yes, which formula should we prefer? Um, 1 by 2. Mm -hmm. C1V1 one, C one, one square. Yeah, C1, V1 square. And your V1 is equal to E. So we can write this as C1, E square. Since voltage across each capacitor is same, so we will prefer relation having voltage. 
it's half c2 v2 square which is half c2 e square similarly it's un which is half cn vn square which is equal to half cn e square So this is how we calculate energy stored in each capacitor. Half C1 E square, half C2 E square, half C N square. Okay, just, just note it down. Then we'll do total energy stored in the cell. Only total energy is left. Okay, so can I raise it? Okay. So the last is to calculate total energy. I'm raising it. So total energy is total energy is just sum of energy stored in each capacitor. Or you can derive a relation. This is half C1 E square plus half C2 E square it's up to half C and E square. This E square by two is constant. You can write this as C1, C2, up to Cn. So when you add C1 to Cn, this is C equivalent. Your energy is half. It's C equivalent into E square. It's half C equivalent into so this is the total energy stored in the circuit. Half C equal into E square. Note it down. There. Let's erase it. Next question. Next number. Again, a system of two capacitors, five microfarad and ten microfarad. And it's connected with a battery of ten. You have to calculate all seven parameters, like first C equivalent, total voltage, 
टोटल चार्ज वोल्टेज अक्रॉस ईच वोल्टेज अक्रॉस ईच चार्ज स्टोर्ड इन ईच चार्ज स्टोर्ड इन ईच एनर्जी स्टोर्ड इन ईच टोटल एनर्जी स्टोर टोटल एनर्जी स्टोर सोल्यूशन फर्स्ट पार्ट ओके लेट स्टार्ट विथ अफ्रोजा अफ्रोजा वट इज सी इक्वल इट इन दिस केस सी इक्वल That's C1 and this is C2. A frozen. How much is C equivalent? C equivalent is C1 plus C2. C1 is five. C2 is ten. C equivalent is fifteen microfarad. That's C equivalent. It's five plus ten. This is fifteen microfarad. Second part. After C equivalent, the next is total voltage. So, Fatma, what is the total voltage across the circuit? Ten. Ten volt. Jabena. What is the total charge stored in the circuit? Uh, Q1 plus Q2. Or any other method? C1 V1 plus C2 V2. Any other? C1 E plus C2 E. C equivalent B. You can directly calculate it using C equivalent B. Total charge is total capacitance into total voltage. So total capacitance is fifteen. So it's fifteen into ten raised to the minus six into total voltage is ten. So total charge is fifteen into ten raised to the power of minus five. This is the total charge stored in each capacitor. After total charge, the next is voltage across each capacitor. So voltage across the first capacitor is it's Q by C one. Oh no! No need to calculate it. In parallel combination, voltages are equal. So V one is equal to V two is equal to E equal to ten. Fifth part: charge stored in each capacitor. Johanna, how do you calculate charge stored in each capacitor? Um, C one Q one equal to C one V one. That is C one E. So C one is five microfarad. So five into ten raised to the minus six into ten. So that's five into ten raised to the power of minus five coulomb. Similarly, you can calculate Q two. Q two is C two V. So C two is ten into ten raised to the power of minus six into V. V two is ten. So ten raised to the power of minus four coulomb. That's Q one. Part six. You need energy stored in each capacitor. So it's U one, which is half C one V one square. So this is half C one. C one is five into ten raised to the power of minus six into V one, which is ten square. So it comes out to be two point five into ten raised to the power of minus four. Similarly, you can calculate U two, which is half C two V two square, and you can calculate total energy just by adding them. U one plus one. Is it clear? Any doubt in any any part? Any doubt in any part?
So can I raise it? Okay, so I'm raising it. Jovena, huh? Joanna, so I'm raising it. So there's one homework question. You have a system of these three capacitors. This is 10 microfarad. This is 10 microfarad. This is five microfarad. I call this as C1, this is C2, and this is C3. And this battery is of 10. Just like the previous questions, you have to calculate all seven parts, everything, like right, right, right starting from C equivalent to energy, everything. Up to seven parts, all you have to calculate. So I'm leaving some hint. The first hint is, combine C1 and C2 and get a capacitor C2. First combine C1 and C2 and get a capacitor C1. And then solve this circuit first. Solve this one first. Solving this one means calculate Q12, calculate V12, calculate Q3, calculate V3. And then solve C12. C12 is combination of C1 and C2. So that's the hint. Use this hint to solve this problem. I'm also writing the answers. So the answers are C equivalent is 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, 10. It's 10 microfarad. Total charge is 10 raised to the power minus 4 coulomb. Total voltage is just like all cases 10 volt. So your V1 is equal to V2 is 2.5 volt, not 2.5 volt, 5 volt. And your V3 will be 10 volt. So these are answers. Try to solve this numerical. We will discuss the numerical in next class. So let's stop here. If you have any doubt, we can discuss it now. Uh, for the next class is on Thursday, same time. We have two classes, one on Tuesday, another on Thursday. So Tuesday and Thursday at the same time. And on Friday, I will take an extra class in the morning. Okay, let's stop here. We'll continue it tomorrow uh, on Thursday. Okay, love is. Okay, I love this.